This episode of the Dungeon Cast is brought to you by Facing Fate, an improvised audio fiction series that keeps you on the edge of your seat. Their newest story, available weekly beginning June 14th, is called Black Knight Hacked Urban Shadows. It takes a right turn into a dark comedy spoof of Survivor-like shows. Join this hapless cast of characters as they fight for their lives in the surprisingly dark and funny world of reality TV. Facing Fate fills your ears and mind with stories based on sci-fi, Lovecraftian horror, dark comedy, and urban fantasy. Each season dives deep into a new genre and sets the bar higher than the last. You can listen to Facing Fate now and hear their new season, Black Knight, weekly anywhere you listen to podcasts. And thanks to Facing Fate for their support. Hey everyone, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Will. I'm Brian. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons, from mucky materials to maddening mysteries. And today we're covering the Mind Witness. The Dungeon Cast. Hey Brian. Hey Will. How you doing today? I'm doing quite well. How are you? I'm doing well, because guess what? It's the year of the Beholder. It's the year of the Beholder. <laughs> Behold. Been, Behold. And it's been a while since we actually did anything Beholder-related that wasn't building our Beholders, which is Beholder-related and fun. But let's actually cover Beholder lore in this year of our Beholder. I would like that. I would enjoy that. <laughs> so today we are covering another Beholderkin, the Mind Witness. Mm -hmm. um, do you know anything about the Mind Witness? I know it's a Beholder. Mm, yes, it's a Beholderkin. It's not a Beholder. It's a Beholderkin. <laughs> yes. I know so that. Now, now I've paired the Mind Witness with another monster today, the uh, Intellect Devourer. This is for two reasons. As much as I really like the Mind Witness as a monster, there just isn't really a ton of lore to talk about. That being said, I think they're interesting. I think there is a lot to talk about. There's just not a lot of lore written down. Um, uh, I will also say the Mind Witness has a nice chonky stat block, which will be cool, to, cool and fun to cover. No, I love the chonky stat blocks. Yeah, we all do. Um, and due to the nature of the Mind Witness, this is just as much of a Mind Flayer episode as a Beholder episode. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. That's scary. Indeed. And the Intellect Devourer, which is the other monster we're talking about today, is also Mind Flayer adjacent. Um, also, we will have a minor cameo appearance by our favorite fart monster today, the Flump. Oh, boy. <laughs> I love that cat. Yeah. Oh, too. yeah. Underdarky. Underdarky. Right. Yeah. So, um, so without further ado, let's get into this double feature creature feature of an episode. I like the th all those words you said right there. <laughs> but you did. <laughs> so most beholders and beholderkin in the world of D&D are birthed from the mad imaginings of the creature itself. But the mind witness is quite different as it is instead a beholder that is captured and experimented upon until it becomes a new creature called a mind witness. Oh man, what could possibly be powerful <laughs> enough to capture a beholder? We'll find out. Okay. Beholders may be some of the scariest things in the Underdark, but they are not the scariest. That award probably goes to the Mind Flayers or the Illithids. There, there, it, is. there it is. <laughs> <laughs> These hyper-intelligent, super-psychic squid people dominate, subjugate, and enthrall all they can get their tentacles on, and beholders are not immune to this fact. Bad Squidwards. Bad uh, although, Squidwards. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. kind of took that one out from under me. Robert Downey Jr. What do you mean? Yeah, in Infinity War. He's like, oh, get yeah. off my planet. What was that dude's name again? SpongeBob character. Yeah, the, the, what, was that, what was the guy's name, though? The, he was the priest of Thanos. Yeah, he was the priest of Thanos. I don't know what his name was. Uh, he had a cool name, and I can't remember what it was. Damn, I'm sure okay, everyone hang in the on. comments will let I, us know. I, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for him. <laughs> he them. was the best of all of all Thanos' minions. Like he, he was the coolest. I think for sure he never failed a mission. Yeah, Even no, he super succeeded. Yes, he? extra yeah. succeeded. Yeah. Um, what was his name? Who were Thanos henchmen? The Black Order? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, Ebony Ma. Ebony Ma. No, that's yeah. cool. Name. I didn't even have to oh, read yeah. the other ones, I'm pretty yeah. sure. No, it's but Ebony Ma. Just because he we're here. Corvus Glaive. Uh, yes, Proxima Corvus Midnight. Corvus, is that the Corvus Glaive is the one with the glaive. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Proxima yeah, yeah, Midnight yeah. was uh, the, bad, the badass uh, chick who fought Scarlet Witch and uh, uh, Black Widow. Black Dwarf. Who? Uh, oh, that's probably the big guy because, you know, get it? It's like calling a big guy tiny. I see. Uh, <laughs> super giant and uh, black swan. Or maybe it's more like dwarf, like a dwarf star, like you really huge. Oh, okay. All right. I, we, back to back to <laughs> that my That was witnesses. a huge derailment it that was, we haven't had in quite some no, time. No, It's always the MCU that does it to us. Yeah. Um, if a beholder can be stunned and brought safely to the brine pool of the elder brain of an illithid colony, it can be converted through seromorphosis into a mind witness. Now, as a recap, seromorphosis is a bodily change that occurs when an illithid tadpole reaches maturity and is then incited into the brain of another being, usually a human, but in this case, a beholder. Anamorph style. Indeed. 
Uh, a tadpole eat, the tadpole eats away the victim's brain matter and essentially replaces the brain, erasing all the subject's personality and memory, but leaving the physical body alive and under the tadpole's control. That's wild. I remember, I'm starting to remember this episode, our Mind, our mind, yeah, our mind episode, episode. Mm-hmm. and where we talked about a lot of this stuff. I think we talked about them. They've got like big tanks, right? Mm-hmm. Like liquid yes, tanks. the big fat vats of these guys. And they eat each other too. And then they pick the strongest. Oh, they man. They put it in his brains. Just having a, <laughs> man, mind flayers really are like, ima- crazy things. <laughs> Imagine if we had a tank of human babies that ate each other. And then we, we would pick the strongest <laughs> and have that baby eat another creature and take its body. That, that's the equivalent. 400 babies. Uh, that, no, that's the deepest YouTube cut ever. Uh, <laughs> you, you, the things you said are horrifying. Yes, and yeah, because they are. Um, I imagined them, so thanks. Funnily enough, you would think that, um, you know, like when you seramorphosis upon a human, transforms a human into a much more powerful psionic entity of like lawful evilness, right? You would think doing this to a beholder would like soup up, you would get a super illicit beholder. You don't. Yeah, okay. You don't act, that's not actually what happens. I'll tell you what happens. So. You don't get like a floating Davy Jones. No, you don't. That would be cool. But what you do get, I actually like better in its own way. We'll, we'll get than to it. Than floating so. Davy Jones? Yes. What if we put the hat from Pirates nope, on help. the... Okay. Don't help. If anything, it hurts the situation. All right. So the process of seramorphosis transforms four of the Beholder's eye stalks into tentacles similar to that of a Mind Flayer. So we're getting close to the Davy Jones bit. Okay, okay. Um, I'm liking it, this. <laughs> and it alters some of the Beholder's eye rays. Um, less intelligent than beholders and less liable to endanger the colony, mind witnesses are psionically imprinted with devotion to the elder brain and submission to all illicit commands, mm. making them almost as obedient as their other favorite pets, the intellect devourers, who we will get to at the back end of this episode. Um, the average mind witness is a six foot diameter orb dominated by a central eye and a small lamprey like maw. Mm. Six eyes on stalk sprout from the top of the orb as four waving tentacles dangle below. 5 e artwork depicts all the eyes of the mind witness as being milky white, as if the creature is blind or dead, which is fitting as it is essentially a psychic vegetable. Yeah, like and, they're going to process like visuals like it's like a big walking baby monitor or not walking, floating. Yeah, kind of. It's like essentially what, what I'm you would think seramorphosis would turn the beholder into like a super crazy powerful thing. But instead it becomes like a walking like a, like a zombie a hall it monitor. Get, almost becomes zombi- yeah. zombified. Yeah. OK, so. The primary function uh, mind mind witnesses provide to their mind flayer, a lot of mind colony, (laughs) is to improve telepathic communication between all psychic entities Uh, colony-wide. Oh. Yeah. A creature in telepathic communication with a mind witness can converse telepathically through it to as many as seven other creatures the mind witness can see, allowing the rapid spread of commands and other information. They are like sentient pylons from StarCraft. They are like uh, Starlink in the real world. Or like Starlink, um, what's Starlink? Or like a cell phone tower. Yeah, so Star- yeah, they, uh, yeah, very much so. They're like little cell phone towers. I think Starlink and um, nerds will correct me, but Starlink is Elon Musk's like or Tesla's like uh, satellite Wi-Fi to Earth oh, system. Okay, for sure. Yes, we'll go with that. We'll go with Starlink. Yeah, because it sounds cool. It's modern. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> due to the complete erasure of their personality and lack of. A will of their own. Mind witnesses ride an odd line of neutrality, or perhaps it should be said that they're unaligned. Uh, if separated from its illithid masters in a permanent sense, a mind witness will naturally seek out other telepathic creatures to tell it what to do. Mind witnesses have been known to ally with flumps and telepathic planar beings such as demons, uh-oh, shifting their <laughs> worldview and changing their alignment to match that of their new mo- masters. Now, flumps and mind witnesses make for perfect symbiotic allies. As we, as we discussed in our flumps episode, they are smelly floating jellyfish monsters with hearts of gold. Yeah. Um, they are very psychic, but also very weak and not great at defending themselves from the terrible dangers of the Underdark. So that means that the mind witness likes to huff farts. Uh, well, the mind Clearly. witness doesn't have a, a <laughs> nose to huff anything. It's got a mouth. It does. So I guess so. Just likes to eat psychic farts. Indeed. Um, what was I? Uh, to further exacerbate the situation, they are hugely empathic in 
deeply feel the intent and emotions of all creatures near them. And since creatures of the Underdark are terribly evil and nasty with equally evil and nasty feelings, our lawful good fart friends end up just being lawfully sad most of the time. Right, lawful sad. Mm -hmm. Aw. Enter the Mind Witness. We were going to put that on a shirt. We never did. We never did. Since a Mind Witness will change to reflect its masters, it will become a beacon of hope and happiness amongst the flumps. And due to its psychic boosting ability, it will empower the flumps and give them a deeper connection with each other, causing a positive emotion feedback loop lastly mind witnesses are far stronger than any pack of flumps so we'll be a fantastic bodyguard for the squishy guys that is pretty fucking cool actually yeah exactly they make great partners and i love it sweet um any questions about mind witnesses before we go over the stat block because that's all there really was ever written about them if a mind witness and it's pack of flumps which reminds me a lot of like a shark with those little like uh, the creatures that eat the bacteria off the shark. Oh, right. Oh, just like, like yeah, a yeah, bunch yeah. of small fish will float yeah. around the shark. Cosmos is whatever they're called. Yeah. Um, I'm picturing that. So, but I was also picturing like if a, if the, a mind witness and its pack of flumps are like running away from a bear, would the mind witness trip the flump to make sure the bear eats the mind, the flump and not the mind witness? You know what I mean? Like if you're running away from a bear, would you trip your homie so you don't die? No, mind witness is going to go to bat and protect his flumps. That's cool. Um, you should look up a picture of the Mind Witness. Uh, uh, okay. I would like to see what you, your reaction to the way it looks I, in uh, Volo's Guide, which I think is a great depiction of it. Mind Witness. My Volo's Guide is in another room, so I'm going to use the power of the internet. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why is it like, oh, yeah, it does a little bit. does Zombified? have the Davy Jones. A just little a bit. Just a small yeah, amount. Yeah, just a teeny amount. It's just like a really clean, like an adolescent Davy Jones, you know, <laughs> but not so scruffy. Not so there are some really concerning pictures of its underside on some of these. Yep. Oh, my That's the lamprey God. mouth. My God. Okay, yeah. Definitely definitely look that shit up, you guys. Okay. You ready to go over the stat block? Uh, yeah, I am. Uh, I got the mind witness here. It's a large aberration of lawful evil with an armor class of 15 natty. Mm-hmm. Uh, HP is 75 or 10 D10 plus 20 mm-hmm. with a uh, walking speed of zero feet, but a flying speed of, uh, well, hover, 20 feet. Which is less Pretty than slow. the other beholders, think, right? They do 30? Um, I'm not sure Double off the top that. of my head, but it makes sense it that they would 20, be slow. It might be actually. They don't have a will of their own, so they're probably just slow movers. <laughs> they don't have a will of their own. They so don't. They just like, <laughs> just like laze around the house. Yeah, like, exactly. They lounge the about unless told to do something. They got a strength of 10, a dex of 14, a constitution of 14, an intelligence of 15, a wisdom of 15, and a charisma of 10. Not bad. Mm-hmm. Not bad at all. Saving throws, intelligence plus five, wisdom plus five, skills and perception. Uh, yeah, perception plus eight. And it's uh, immune to being prone like all beholders. I find it interesting that it is very, very smart and very perceptive, but still doesn't have a will of its own. Mm. Interesting. Um, like a cell tower. Languages are deep <laughs> speech and undercommon. Uh-huh. Uh, telepathy, 600 feet. That's far. Yes, it's, it's very smart. That's a challenge rating five worth 1,800 experience points for those of you that use experience points who you've made yourselves known Uh to this show. Indeed they have. A feature of this monster is telepathic hub. When the mind witness receives a telepathic massage, I'm sorry, message, it can (laughs) telepathically share that message with up to seven other creatures within 600 feet of it that can see it. Yep, it's just bouncing signal. It's mm-hmm. just bouncing signal. That's what it does. A telepathic massage. That would have been a cool thing for my... Um, remember how I made like a brooding psi warrior on accident? Yeah. Should have made him a massage therapist. You know, what is a telepathic massage other than just an ASMR video? That's that's interesting. <laughs> that's an interesting way to do it. I was thinking of like telekinesis, like rubbing them muscles for oh, realsies. Oh, actually... Oh, that sounds unpleasant. I don't want... I would not want psychic rubs upon the ridges of my brain. No, Le- okay. We're going to go into pitch mode. Brian's okay. going into pitch mode. Right. Think of this. A telepathic link between yourself and your massage therapist, uh-huh. and they use their telekinesis to make sure that you're having a great time because they know well, what they're doing right. Then, there's a difference between telepathy and telekinesis, though. Yes, you got to have both. Okay. You got to have both. Yeah. So it's not, both. it's not... That's not a telepathic massage. That's a telekinetic massage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes. There we go. <laughs> so you were saying telepathic. I'm thinking like literally brain waves, like making your brain feel like it's having a massage. I was in like umbrella mode, like okay. brain power psychic, to do brain a stuff. psychic massage. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. All My right. Psy warrior should have been a massage therapist. Is it all should. I'm saying. Yes. And I agree. A telekinetic one. Yeah. Of course. And a telepathic one. Why not? Why not have an ASMR video at the same time as your telekinetic <laughs> muscle massage? What was your What was your psy warrior's name again? Brain. Okay. 
<laughs> Let's get back to the mind witness. <laughs> Wait, we have more? We have more? Oh, yeah. We have the, yeah, all the actions. Have, yeah, all <laughs> the actions. I, I went yeah. into pitch mode. I don't yeah. do that on the show. No, you don't. Uh, so we got uh, the multi-attack. The mind witness makes two attacks, one with its JV Jones bits and one with its bite. Um, that is to say tentacles. Bite is a melee weapon attack of plus five to hit it with a reach of five feet on one creature. It's going to do 16 or 46 plus two piercing damage, as bites sometimes do. Mm -hmm. Tentacles are the second one. Melee weapon attack plus five to hit, reach of five feet, one creature. It's going to hit for 20 or 48 plus two psychic damage. Pretty hefty. <laughs> you get hit with a tentacle and you take psychic damage. It's fucking hmm. awesome. Yeah. Uh, and it says it's melee weapon attack. It's, it says right there, it's melee. Maybe it's 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 not the tentacle that hurts you. It's like when it gets its tentacle it's your, on you. Your feelings are hurt because you can't believe it, that it hit you with its like. It then has a direct Davy link to you and then attacks your mind. In that oh. way. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. If the target is large or smaller, it is grappled. So there, yeah, there yeah, you go. It's and grabbing it must, you, yeah. It must succeed on a DC 13 intelligence saving throw or be stunned until the scrapple ends. There's an intelligence saving throw. Nice. You it's don't see those a long ever time. Happen. Yeah. Yeah. Psychic stuff. Yeah. It makes sense. It's got eye rays, baby. The mind witness shoots three of the following magical eye rays at random, re-rolling duplicates, choosing one to three targets it can see within 120 feet of it. Okay. The first one is the aversion ray. The targeted creature must make a DC 13 charisma saving throw. On a failed save, the target has disadvantage on attack rolls for one minute. The target can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on itself on a success. Pretty cool. Number two is the fear ray. The targeted creature must succeed on a DC 13 wisdom saving throw or be frightened for one minute. Mm -hmm. The target can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on itself on a success. Number three is the psychic ray. The target must succeed on a DC 13 intelligence saving throw or take 27 or 68 psychic damage fuck it's a beast uh number four is the slowing ray the targeted creature must make a dc 13 dexterity saving throw on a failed save the target speed is halved for one minute in addition the creature can't take reactions and it can't take either an and it can take either an action or a bonus action on its turn not, not both, both. Mm. not both man the creature can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns ending the effect on itself on a success number five is a stunning ray the targeted creature must succeed on a DC 13 constitution saving throw or be stunned for one minute. The target can repeat the saving throw at the start of each of its turns, ending the effect on itself on a success. Number six is the telekinetic ray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the, target, uh, if the target is a creature, it must make a DC 13 strength saving throw on a failed save. The mind witness moves Moves it up to 30 feet in any direction, and it is restrained by the raised telekinetic grip until the start of the mind witness's next turn or until the mind witness is incapacitated. If the target is an object weighing 300 pounds or less that isn't being worn or carried, it is telekinetically moved up to 30 feet in any direction. Uh, the mind witness can also exert fine control on objects with this ray, such as manipulating a simple tool or opening <clears> a door <throat> or a container or... Doesn't need hands. Getting your muscles worked sure. so good. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I do like how all six rays are all psionically themed. Yes, that and is they're, cool. They're, none of them are magically themed. I like that. Yeah, the um, the telekinetic ray is pretty much the same ray. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean yeah, the beholder already had Fear that. Ray. Yeah, there's some overlap. That's yeah. fine. Um, yeah, I really like that too. I like um, I like how this kind of fits with the beholder having some sort of psychic capacity to begin with that a, a mind flare would go to like to make one degree. of these. Yeah, it's like a good target. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's it seems like there's a lot of good reasons to pick a beholder over like lots of other creatures as a slave if yeah you can, if you can handle it sure yeah uh, anything you want to add to that before we move on no okay so now we're going to talk about the intellect devourer Ooh. now you don't you haven't seen a picture of this thing have you i did because ah. i needed the stat block okay i was hoping you hadn't yeah um it's a brain horse <laughs> <laughs> um Kinda. Uh, the Intellect Devourer is a bizarre monster. It's one of those horrific but silly looking creations that once you are familiar enough with D&D &D monsters, it's obviously a D&D &D monster. It's obviously a D&D &D monster. <laughs> no one else. Or a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Or There's that, There's some yes. severe overlap there. There seems to be. <laughs> uh, it essentially resembles a walking brain protected by a crusty covering and set on bestially clawed legs. Um, I was going to say pull up one on Google. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this foul aberration, as its uh, overly obvious moniker implies, feeds on the intelligence of sentient creatures. And in doing so, it takes over a victim's body on behalf of its masters, the Mind Flayers. Mm. 
Um, so mind flayers breed intellect devourers to serve as roaming hunters of the underdark. They are basically like these things, horrifying bloodhounds, cyanically sniffing out brains for their masters. <laughs> I can't believe that this is actually what it is. Uh, yeah. It like, looks like it's supposed to do that. Yeah, it does. Oh, my God. Uh, the Illithids create uh, intellect devourer by taking the brain of one of their thralls and subjecting it to a horrible ritual that D&D sources fail to outline, but I'm sure is appalling to behold. Yeah, as old. It, yeah, <laughs> as it sprouts legs, the brain becomes an intelligent predator, as twisted and evil as its masters. Jeez, man! Yeah. Like, it feels like the template for mind flayers was something else, and they're just like, "What if we made it all psychic?" Um, like this isn't a, like a hunting wolf, you know? Like, what if we made barbarians psychic? I think that illithids are obviously very Lovecraftian um, Mm -hmm. inspired Mm -hmm. and Lovecraftian stuff has a lot of psychic stuff going on too. Yeah. But I I mean like just the setup here, like we've got attack dogs and we have got like evil scientists. Like uh what if we just made like barbarian tribes are strong and they smash stuff good. Uh Yeah. Mind flayer tribes are smart and they think stuff crazy. Yes. And it just feels, you know, you get what I'm saying? It feels like they kind of took, like, a shape of something and then, uh-huh. like, they leaned let's turn it all into brain it. stuff. I, I mean, yeah, D&D does that. Though. I can't and put I think, my finger on I think what a it lot, is because looks like a wolf. A lot of fiction does that. Well, I mean, I have made it out to be a bloodhound. And it essentially is. like they, It is. They, but they don't, well, they do attack, and they do. But then what they do, <laughs> uh, what they do is they, they attack, they eat the brain, or they, no, no, they take over the brain, and then they take over the body, and they bring it back to their Mind Flayer masters. Mm-hmm. I guess Bloodhounds kind of do that with Prey. Yeah, like a dash hunt. Yeah, I suppose so. Anyways. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know either. <laughs> I can't I can't quite, like, I, I can't formulate articulate. what I want to say. I can't articulate what, what I'm thinking. Well, maybe it'll but come I, to there's you. There's something there. Okay, gotcha. Let me know in the comments what you guys <laughs> think i think i'm thinking of in previous editions the process of making intellect devourers had a larval stage creature called uh oh god called an ustilagar ustilagar yeah sure sure that rather than fully developed legs the ustilagars slither about on vine-like tendrils and the larval creature lacks the hard protective crust of its adult counterpart making it squishy and moist oh god Um, they are considered a delicacy by many mind flayers and are sold for high prices in several varieties such as raw pickled or seasoned with fungi. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, An yeah. intellect devourer will instinctually hunt a thinking being and consume the creature's mind and memories. It then turns the host's body into a puppet under its control. An intellect devourer typically uses its puppet host to lure others into the domain of the mind flayers to then be enthralled and consumed by its masters. There's people that are like, yes, eat the memory of what I did in the fourth grade. Eat it. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> um... <laughs> So these things are a lot smarter than bullet hounds. Like, I mean, they're walking brains. <laughs> I was going to say, like, what tipped you off, brother? Than, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can't do anything else but think. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, I think their intelligence, what, is like 12 to 14, somewhere in there. Um, <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's wrong, Brainy? I just want to sleep, but I can only think. <laughs> I swear to God. If you got any questions about the intellect devourer? Because that's all I got. And um, uh, you have you have the stat block. I have a multitude of questions. <laughs> like well, the first and foremost being why, why? Because it's the underdark. Things are weird down here, man. Yeah. I mean, we got floating fart monsters with hearts of gold. We got <laughs> Davy Jones, as far as the eye can see. We got <laughs> uh, beholders, like reality warping one eyed, but actually eleven eyed monsters. So, anyways, psychic mushrooms. We have psychic mushrooms, yeah, absolutely. Crazy fish people with crazy their, fish people with the their Kurtoa. their shit goddess, yeah. their shit goddess. <laughs> yes, Shadakla. Are you ready? It was Shadakla, right? No, it's not. No. What was it? Um, what was Shadakla? If we're talking about the Kuotoa, I it's, am. Uh, blip dope bloop. What was it? Oh, blip, blip dope bloop. Yeah, yeah, oh, that one. Fuck. Yeah. What blip, was Shadakla? Shadakla is the realm in which Zuckmoy comes from. And doesn't, oh, that's right. And you couldn't figure out a joke for the realm of Shadokla, <laughs> which is also where Jubilix lives. He lives under it. Yeah, and they, yeah. they, they uh, splatoon about. Mm-hmm. We discussed They splatoon about. Tell me about intellect of ours, Brian. I will. They're uh, tiny aberrations of lawful evil. They're tiny? So they're like little Pomeranians. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, remember, they're human brains that, that are given legs. Okay. They don't I enlarge see. all that much. Nice. Nice. God, can you imagine one that says a horse, though? 
I did. I was like, this is manticore size with its big meaty claws. <laughs> no. um, they're tiny aberrations of lawful evil. Their armor class is 12, and their hit points are 21 or 64 plus 6. They have a movement speed of 40 feet. That's scary. Why are they yeah, so fast? They crawl they, about, can't they? They have four legs. They, they can only think and run around on their four legs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nothing else. No. Nope. Strength is 6, dexterity is 14, constitution 13, intelligence 12, wisdom 11, and charisma 10. Skills are perception plus 2, stealth plus 4. Nice. Damage resistance is bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical weapons. That's cool to have. Mm -hmm. I am a brain. You cannot defeat me with regular steel. Well, okay, so I know it looks like a brain, because it is. But, like, that, that the brain you're seeing is a protective crust, so it's actually really tough. Ooh. Yeah, it's like a tough skin. Tough brain. Yeah. Hard brain. Uh, Condition immunity is blinded. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Blind side of 60 feet. Blind beyond this radius, though. Mm -hmm. And a passive perception of 12. They understand deep speech but can't speak because they don't have a mouth. But they probably have telepathy, no? We'll get there. Okay. Telepathy, 60 feet. (laughs) That's what I thought. Challenge rating 2. These bad buggers are worth 450 experience points. Gotcha. For those of you who count experience points yeah a few of these things coming up on you scary oh yeah that seems bad it seems bad especially when they can detect sentience mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the intellect devourer can sense the presence and location of any creature within 300 feet of it that has an intelligence of three or higher rocks you're good yeah everything else beware yeah well and all those everything. things that we've said are one higher than a rock they're also good mm. regardless of interposing barriers unless the creature is protected by a mind blank spell um, you want to look up the mind blank spell? Sure. Well? Multi attack. I can imagine what it does. It probably. Spoilers. Blanks the mind. Blanks your fucking mind, dog. Uh, okay, so multi attack. The intellect devourer makes one attack with its claws and uses devour intellect. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Claw <laughs> is melee weapon attack plus four to hit, reach five feet, one target. With uh, It's going to do seven or 2d4 plus two slashing damage. Uh, Wait, it's claw? Yeah, wow. that's the claw. I just didn't think about this in clawing anybody. Yep, slashing damage, seven slashing damage is not anything to sneeze at, when, especially when the next thing it does is devour intellect. Oh, God. Uh, the intellect... Not my intellect. <laughs> the intellect devourer targets one creature it can see within 10 feet of it that has a brain. The target must succeed on a DC 12 intelligence saving throw against this magic or take 11 2d10 Psychic damage. Are there any thinking creatures in in this game that don't have a brain? There's got to be at least some, right? Like, what about intelligent constructs? It can't, it can't devour their intellect, can it? Like a warforged? Sure. Like warforged don't have brains, right? I don't think so. But even if it's not, there are other intelligent constructs. I've never like cut a Modron. Does a Modron have a brain? I've never cut open a Modron or a Warforged. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> we need to do something. I'm just like, it was specific about the brain part. I'm just like, how many intelligent creatures don't have a brain? What about like, uh, there's got to be oozes that are at least smart, as smart as a six or a seven. This thing can't touch them. They definitely don't have brains because you can see through them. You're I want to, so, yeah. I want a list of intelligent creatures that have brains that are in this game. We've got some serious Googling to do. Mm-hmm. Um, the target must succeed on, I read that, uh, on a failure, roll 3d6. If the total equals or exceeds the target's intelligence score, that score is reduced to zero. Oh boy. The target is stunned until it regains at least one point of intelligence. Oh uh, okay, how do you do that? It doesn't say, yeah. like, repeat the save. <laughs> is that a, a restoration thing? Like, Maybe. what is this? <laughs> So, what it, the fuck is you, you make <laughs> you make a save? Okay, and it drains you all the way to zero. If the total equals or exceeds the target's intelligence score, that score is reduced to zero. The target okay. is stunned until it gains. So you at don't least even one. make a save, really. Yeah, you have to like get it back. The smarter you are, the better protected you are against this stuff. Right, but how do you get these back? It doesn't say. I don't know. There um, must be a rule. I'm sure there's a stuff rule like this. about it, ability score drains. It smells like restoration, like it greater restoration. Like restoration. Yeah, I'm sure that would fix it. So, I wonder what else would fix it. Does long rest fix this? Probably not. No. Probably not. No. You just waking so. up dumb as fuck. <laughs> you imagine waking up and everybody's like, "Damn, when'd you get so fucking stupid? Like, you can't even fucking." Clean are you up ready? Your bed are, rolls. are you ready for the mind Blake spell? Uh, yeah, give me the mind. Okay, Blake mind Blake. It's actually an eighth level abjuration oh, spell. Yeah, it's very high. Casting time one action. 
Uh, it lasts for 24 hours. Only bards and wizards get this. Until the spell ends, one willing creature you touch is immune to psychic damage. Any effect that would sense its emotions or read its thoughts, divination spells, and the charmed condition. The spell even foils wish spells and spells or effects of similar power used to affect the target's mind or to gain information about the target. It's like this mind is fucking warded. I've activated my trap card. You can't even wish this shit out. No, nope. my brain is so protected. It's eighth level magic. Yeah. Fuck your nine uh, level the magic. Best, the best helmet. We got Body Thief. The Intellect Devourer initiates an intelligence contact, contest with an incapacitated humanoid within five feet of it. If it wins this contest, the Intellect Devourer magically consumes the target's brain, teleports it into the target's skull, and takes control of the target's body. While inside a creature, the Intellect Devourer has total cover against attacks and other effects originating outside its host. The Intellect Devourer regains its intelligence, wisdom, and charisma scores, as well as understanding of deep speech, its telepathy, and its traits. It otherwise adopts the target's statistics. It knows everything the creature knew, including spells and languages. Holy fuck. If the host body drops to zero hit points, the Intellect Devourer must leave it. A protection from evil and good spell cast on the body drives the Intellect Devourer out. That's only a second level spell. That's mm. good. The Intellect Devourer is also forced out if the target regains its devoured brain by means of a wish, which is ninth level, which we've established. Uh, by spending five feet of its movement, the Intellect Devourer can voluntarily leave the body, teleporting to the nearest unoccupied space within five feet of it. The body then dies. Yeah, I was about to say, like, uh, you got rid of it. Cool. It ate your brain. Unless its brain is restored within one hour. How do you restore its brain? Sounds like a restoration spell. I don't know. I don't know. It sounds like they're going to die and you have to revivify them. That's all I got. There should be, like, a manual. Like, it should have been included in the stat block of, like, how to fucking fix these problems. Like, where do I... It, it doesn't even say, like, reference page this of the DMG. To deal with the like, brain issue. <clears throat> yeah, you, <clears throat> you got brain issues? Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> like well, You're dead. You're yeah, dead now. let me look up Greater Restoration real quick to see, like, what it covers. Okay, I guess while you do that, I will just be more direct on my Google search. <laughs> okay. You imbue a creature you touch with positive energy to undo a debilitating effect. You can reduce the target's exhaustion level by one or end one of the following effects on the target. One effect that charmed or petrified, one curse, including the target's attunement to a cursed magic item, any reduction to one of the target's ability scores, one effect reducing the target's hit point maximum. None of, yeah. No. Nope. Re yeah. Reduction to one of the target's ability scores. So there's that, but this doesn't solve the brain this problem. This doesn't solve the brain thing. Um, that is probably the wish spell. Like, can I get this guy's brain back? Yeah, I, I think I think this person dies and you have to spend a spell to revive them. Yeah, they're like giving you a, like, because this is, this is clearly written for high level, like based off of some of the things. Maybe, this thing's do. a challenge rating too, so I don't know. Well, the, Greater Restoration is a fifth level abjuration spell. True. Like if a pack of things... A pack of these shows up. There's a chance one of your dudes is going to get their brain eaten as right. long as you're like between levels eight and ten or twelve. So if you're doing like a really high level under dark mind flayer thing, you probably have the resources. This is a really like this was is an obstacle with low level creatures that is actually going to challenge that party and make yeah. it use resources that Which it I like. normally would. That's awesome. Yeah. So like if you want to like obliterate your low level players by eating their brains here this you is how go you do it. this yeah. is a great way to do that with a 20 hp monster that you can I like mob that. yeah like <laughs> what a horrifying thing having to wish your friends brains back into their I skulls know. and shit like seriously i know what to do like yeah. also like how do you in character do you know that you can just do that oh he's not dead like it's been 10 minutes he's still not dead well without your brain you will die but it says you have an hour to do it like an hour to do what? The body then dies unless its brain is restored within one hour. That's the last. That line. makes no sense. Like you, you're not going to breathe. It doesn't make sense, but it's it's written there. Okay, fine, whatever. I okay, mean, like, person dies, you got to revive them or take them to a cleric who can revive them. That's that's my ruling right now. That's how I see it until I see something else that changes my mind. Anything else you want to add about intellect of hours? Um, I like the, I like their legs. <laughs> I like their buff legs. Gotcha. Do we do long rests? Is that what we do? I don't remember what we do anymore. Yeah, we're going to do a long rest. All right, let's go take a long rest. <laughs>
Hey everybody, welcome to the long rest. We're getting ready for bed and we're putting on our warm slippers even though summer is approaching because we like to f keep our feet clean as we walk around this nasty dungeon. Isn't that right, Will? Indeed. What's on our slippies today? <laughs> um, Probably tentacles. Um, Our, our slippies got the Davy Jones. Or brains, oh, even worse. Brains. <laughs> um, fun fact about Beholders, Will. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a Beholder in the upcoming Dungeons and Dragons movie. It's going to be played by Bill Nighy. Bill Nighy? William Francis Nighy. Nahi? Oh, we like Bill Nye the Science Guy? Time? No, it's uh, it's the guy who plays Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, the guy who plays um, the stepfather in uh, Shaun of the Dead. Yes. Love that guy. Love Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. Great movie. He'd be a great beholder. Yeah. Um, I, wish I, I wish I had a quote from him right now, but I don't. Oh, Sean, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> uh, and that's my beholder fun fact. It's he he also played the father of the main character from um, Underworld. Which I, oh, is a movie. I you're do, right. I do like that movie. He's the vampire. I think in that his movie, name's Victor right? in that movie. Yeah. Oh, Victor yeah. the vampire. Okay. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, he's like the he's like the boss monster. He's like the the end guy. He's he's the main bad guy. Antagonist. Yeah, I think There's you're right. There's a word for that. Yeah. Ooh. Anyways, um, what we got today, Brian? Yeah, I guess they 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 Wikipedia put this article is about the British actor for the American science educator, see Bill Nye. So I guess it is Nye. Yeah. But it has a Y at the end, which is why I wanted to say it like that. It's N I G H Y. N I G H Y. Not E. That's why I said it like yeah. that. But it's it's clearly they're like, if you want to know more about Bill Nye, this the science guy, this is the wrong page. Oh, um, so it must be. Yeah. Nye, yeah. So anti who uh let's let's give our thanks, Will. Indeed, it's uh, it's time to do that. Take my hands and close your eyes. Okay. I see that you're doing it. I'm going to now close my eyes uh, and thank everybody who came into Patreon over the last like month or so. Hell yeah, everybody. Yeah, thank you thank guys. Thank you guys so much for supporting us. Um, you help our dreams of doing this full time uh, come cl come closer and closer every day. And mm, that's indeed. badass as fuck. I love you guys so much. I hope you're enjoying your bonus content. Please uh, don't uh, hesitate to get into the Discord and get into the private exclusive channel. And um, check out stuff like the dungeon chats and yada yada. So let's get into it. We got uh, we got patrons. We got patrons. Let's go, Will. You let's ready? Let's go. Let's okay. go. We got Gato del Agua. Thank you for upping your pledge. Thank you. Oh, God, what is it? Gato, Gato del, del Agua. Gato del Agua. Thank the cat you very of the much. Water cat. All right, water cat. Thank you. No, it's Gato del Agua. I, just... I said that first, so okay, I've yeah. said them both now. Uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Thanks for upping the pledge, uh, Gato del Agua. Uh, we got Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. I, I thought, there's no last name? This is Patrick. It must be Patrick Star. It's just Patrick. It has to be Patrick Star then. Firmly grasp it. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. Firmly grasp it. Uh, we got Emmanuel Laplante. Thank you, Emmanuel. Um, thank you for upping your pledge. Thank you. Thank you. We got DM Lou. Thank you, DM Lou. DM Lou. We got Reese. Bam, 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 bam. Thank you, Reese. Thank you, Reese. That's like re, like Reese's, Reese's Pieces. Witherspoon. Like oh, like, or like Reese's, Reese's Cup. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking Reese's Cup. You know, in Canada, it's not Reese's; it's just Reese. Reese Cup. Mm -hmm. Reese cups. Yeah. Damn. Thanks for the hockey, Canada. <laughs> I'll just say something positive in the instead of what syrup. I was gonna say. Yeah. The whiskey dictionary. Thank you, whiskey dictionary. Damn the whiskey dictionary. They got yeah. money for us. Thank you, whiskey dictionary. Thank you, whiskey dictionary. Nick Serrano. Thank you, Nick. Uh, we got. The last mile? The last mile? Jeez, dude. Up in the pledge like that? <laughs> bam, 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 bam. Thank you, the last mile. Adam Balaban. Thank you, Adam. Nick Smith. Thank you, Nick again. Another Nick. It's This one's spelled N-I-C-H. Oh. Nick. Thank you, Nitch. Nitch. <laughs> Nitch. Smith. Thank you, Nick. I'm just probably Nick. I uh, Probably. Thank you, Sam Lasater. Thank you, Sam. The Seder? La, La Seder. It's like a La real last name, I think. Oh, okay. Thank you, Sam. Um, I'm never sure what names are real and which aren't. You so can I never just, tell. Just, Patreon doesn't like I'll discern. Learn to, so I learned to shut my damn mouth <laughs> about people's names. Uh, Oneski. Thank you, Oneski. Kevin Bowles. Thank you, Kevin Bowles. Like Bowles? Like like I, Bowles. I, yeah. Like B-O-W. B-O-W-L-E-S. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> what did I just say about people's names? Man? Yeah, I got you, man. All right. Uh, we got Sam. Oh, there's a lot of Sams and Nicks today. What is happening? Thank you. Thank you. Sam Thank you to Nick all Brigade. the Sams listening right Thank now. Thank you, Sams and Nicks. 
<laughs> sounds like an ice cream brand. It does. Uh, I, I go to Sam's and Nick's. <laughs> I'd go to Sam's and Nick's for a brew, a brewski. Yeah. Let's uh let's get some some love for Toan Lee. Say again. T O A N L I. T O A N L I. L I is separate. Thank you, Toan Lee. Toan Lee. And then uh Ryan Carter. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. The Knicks, the Ryans, the, the Kevins. Sam's and the Kevins. The Oneskis. The Oneskis. The, the, the last, last miles. miles. <laughs> Lou. Is that the whole list? <laughs> That was the whole list. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thank you guys, guys so much. It means the world you guys does. Fucking rule. Indeed. Um, just peep the bonus content. It's getting updated. Yeah, thanks for supporting us. It helps tremendously. We're almost at the end of a Super Quest Saga arc, so there's going to be the OST and the ten dollars tier mm-hmm. is going to be updated. Indeed. Um, and we keep that fre- fresh and fun and light. All those compositions. I can't believe I've written like thirty songs um, for that show. Fuck. Indeed. Um, it's going to be like too. fifty by the time they're done. It's the show. Is I don't done. know. There's only fourteen. Well, as far as I can tell, from where we've stopped recording, which is ahead of what's released as of right now, there should only be fourteen episodes left. So, right. If you're writing one song per new episode, then yeah, maybe maybe you will have. 15. It's averaging one song per okay. new episode. There so it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot, man. One time, I just like down pitched a song because there were two fights in the same episode. Yeah, and that's it sounded, fine. It sounded totally different. I yeah, was like, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Anyway, you can check all that stuff out on Patreon. Um, we got a Google Drive system. We got live play stuff in there. So thanks, uh, patreon.com slash the Dungeon Cast. If you'd like to support us, you can also support us by following our uh, our social media accounts, like the Dungeon Cast on Instagram and Twitter, uh, where we occasionally run contests, take polls. Um, and also Discord has been a really cool place lately. They're doing the – it's always a cool place, but they just started a community village project where you guys can have some input yes. on the community village. And I, vo- I voted. I, we, I went with Swamp, and we were oh, taken over mountain. by Mountains. I went yeah. with Mountain. Mountain yeah. was my second choice yeah. for sure. Yeah. But I had just played a quiet year game with Mountains, so okay. I was like, let me go with Swamp yeah, okay. and see what the community does with that and the thick thickets. That, and the thickest uh, thickets. Damn it. You guys took it from me. Anyway, uh, that's it. I think we're going to call right. it a game. We're going to call it a game. We'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye.